endodontics through a molar crown. Local anesthesia, remember, if you're performing endodontics, always give a block or infiltration and an intraligamental injection. Always give an intraligamental injection and go to the link on how to give a painless injection, but you place the bevel of the, of the needle toward the tooth and very gently place it in the sulcus. You're gonna use Sitness Plain, which is PS neutral, pH neutral, and just apply gentle but firm pressure for about 20 seconds. You want that tooth to be dead numb. So always give an intracellular injection and refer to that Dental Minute or Dentistry Master Classes video on how to do that. Here's the intracellular. We're placing a rubber dam. Now, in a perfect world, you don't do endo through a crown. In a perfect world, you cut the crown off, do the endodontics, and replace the crown. But you and I are in real practice. I practice four days a week. One day that crown may fracture, and you may have to replace it. But it's just not practical. It's not what we do every day to cut every crown off and redo the crown. So this is just a part of life. So with very light pressure and lots of water, with a football diamond, a coarse football diamond, I'm cutting through the occlusal surface of the crown. Now this could be Emax, this could be porcelain, this could be zirconium, or it could be porcelain to metal. So if, you, if, it, if there's metal involved, you cut through the tooth colored part with a coarse football diamond, and once you get to the metal, you're gonna cut through that with a 330 carbide burr. Again, very light pressure, lots of water, high speed. And you want your access hole to be large enough that you've got straight entry into the canals. You don't wanna be going like that with your drill or your files. You want straight entry into the canal, so you have to make an appropriately sized uh, hole. And once we're into the pulp chamber, then I'm gonna come back with a slow speed uh, number six round burr and just open everything up, open up the pulp chamber so that I've got direct entry into those canals. That's very important. This is the real world endo Brazilier method. It's fantastic. See, I'm into the pulp chamber. I'm locating my canals with my explorer, my straight explorer, opening it up a little bit more. You can see this tooth was very hyperemic. It wasn't abscessed. It was incredibly, very, very hyperemic, which means it was hypersensitive to temperature. So this is my measuring applicator on my computer and it's a pretty close approximation. It's not exact, but we know it's about 21 millimeters from the occlusal surface of the crown to the apex of the tooth. And that gives me a general idea. Now these are uh, hand files, K-type, and headstrom. This is something that's very important. Don't forget what I'm about to tell you. The first part of procedure should be hand filing with either a K-type or a headstrom. These are number, as you can see, size 10. You can also use a 15. But you want to clean out the apical part of that nerve because anybody that uses uh, drills, rotary drills, is from time to time going to have a separated file. It's significant. It's of consequence. It, you need to try to retrieve uh, remove the separated file if you haven't cleaned and irrigated the apical part of the canal prior to separation of the file. But if you file it real well, and I use a K-type and then I come back with a headstrom and irrigate with dilute sodium hypochlorite and then file some more and irrigate with dilute sodium hypochlorite. So that canal is very clean in the apical one-third before I begin with my drills. If you'll do that, when you have the occasional separated file, it's not gonna be a problem 99% of the time. Like all of you, anybody using drills, I've had a few files separate. And in all these years of using them, I've never had a problem, but I always file the apical part thoroughly and irrigate it prior to beginning with the drills. Always curve the hand file prior to placing it in the canal. 
and then this is my apex locator and you can see I'm 1.5 millimeters from the apex. You want to be 0.5 so I need to go about another millimeter. These are very accurate. Now what if you can't get a reading on that apex locator? It's just all over the chart. There's probably fluid in the canal and so dry that out and then put your hand file back in the canal and take another reading. Now these are Brazilier or real world endo scalp files. These are fantastic for locating canals. You know how some patients will have sclerotic canals and it, you just you really have a hard time finding them. But well, once you've used your round burr and removed tooth structure in the areas where the canal should be, place your dilute sodium hypochlorite and put these scalp files on your rotary instrument and just poke around on the floor of the pulp chamber and you'll be surprised how many times you just fall in to that canal. It's easier than trying to poke with a hand file. Those are hard, it's hard to locate a small, small canal with a hand file, but these are very small. It's very difficult to separate a scalp file, and they're excellent for finding those hard to find canals, the MB2s and, you know, the the buccal canals on maxillary teeth and the lingual cana mesial canals on mandibular molar teeth. So that's what I'm doing here. It's just finding that canal and you want to measure because we know it's about 22 millimeters. And if you go out the apex just a little bit, that's okay. Now this is dilute sodium hypochlorite. Three parts water, one part uh, sodium hypochlorite. And I'm not squirting it forcefully into the canal. I'm just filling up the pulp chamber. And I want this I want the chamber filled with dilute sodium hypochlorite when I'm using the drills or the hand file. Lots of lubrication. So I file to depth with my hand file, my K-type or headstrom number 10 or number 15, normally number 10. Then I'm going to come back with my endo sequence rotary files, number 25 to 40. So here come the drills after I've hand filed. That was the 40, now this is the 25. And see it goes to depth. And make about three passes with each one. Now what if I place the 25 and it won't go to depth? Then I'm gonna come back with my hand file, my headstrom, and I'm gonna do some more filing and try to enlarge the canal just a little bit with my hand file. This is the medium, you get, may go to the smaller, but usually I can, it works just fine coming back with the headstrom and just enlarging that canal a little bit um, in the apical part. Don't put much pressure and put lots of, lots of irrigation. See how this is not, I'm not pushing the sodium hypochlorite into the canals. I'm just putting it in the pulp chamber and letting anything in the canals float to the surface. You see the three canals here. This is a little larger canal, I mean drill. Now we're going to depth with the 25, and see this is the blue, so this would be the 30. Irrigate, and then once I irrigate in my assistant sections, then I come back without the suction and just fill up this pool of the pulp chamber with the dilute sodium hypochlorite. I'll just leave this full so that there's lots of lubrication when I go into the crowns. This is the 30, then I'm going to depth there. Now if it won't go to depth, I'm gonna come back with the file the drill I used before that. In this case, it would be the 25. I'm going to enlarge it just a little bit, then the 20, will, then the 30 will work. But don't ever force it. Don't force it. Then you progress until the largest drill goes into the canal. Now, obviously, in a molar tooth or a bicuspid tooth, I use the medium drills 99% of the time. I'm not trying to make this huge open canal because you're removing tooth structure as you file out or drill out the inner part of the canal. So don't go crazy with this. You just want to be sure it's nice and clean. And always fill the canal with dilute sodium hypochlorite. So now I'm going to place my gutta percha cones in the canals and take a radiograph to confirm the length is correct. Looks good. This one's just a little bit long. I'm gonna measure that and cut it. Then I'm gonna irrigate again. And this is the Sitness plane with the 30 gauge local anesthetic syringe. And I'm not putting pressure in the canals. I'm just rinsing out the sodium, dilute sodium hypochlorite and any little dust, tooth dust or anything else in the canal 
So there's nothing but clear liquid coming out of the canal. Then I'm going to dry them with paper points. This is such an efficient system. And I'll use two paper points in each canal. Now this is the BC sealer. And I'm going to squirt that under a little bit of pressure into each canal. If some of it, a little bit of it, a little puff comes out the tip of the canal, that's fine. And keep, don't move this up and down. Just squirt it in and lift it out so you don't incorporate air bubbles into the sealer. I'm going to squirt it into those three canals. And then when you place your gutta percha cones, place them straight in. Again, don't move them up and down because you don't want to incorporate air bubbles into the sealer. And when you place the gutta percha cone, that's going to push the sealer into any little crevices of the canal. Just straight in. Then you're going to sear them off with the Indo Pro 270. This is just a heating element. And then I'm going to go down into the canals just a little bit and soften the gutta percha material and then come back with a plugger, a small plugger, and just plug those. Just press them into the canal just a bit. Here's my plugger. Now this is IRM and I'm pushing that into the pulp chamber, and then this is a spoon. Once it has initial set, I'm removing any excess around the edges, and then I'm coming back with a coarse diamond, lots of water, once that IRM is completely set, and just freshening the margins of the crown so there's not any IRM on the margins of the crown. Then this is buffered hydrofluoric acid gel. I'm going to leave that for a minute and a half to etch the crown material, then I'm going to rinse that off, then place primer adhesive. Very important that you blow that off into a two by two, blow it off, and then cure it. Don't cure it when it's in bulk or volume, a high volume of that material in the crown because there's uh, acetone carrier and that can weaken the bond. So blow all that excess off so that nothing wiggles before you cure it, and cure it about five to 15 seconds then this is highly filled composite in the chamber, and there we have it. So here's the final result. So we've got a little bit of sealer out the apex. That's okay. That'll just dissolve away. So that's the dental minute. These procedures work, and they work every time.